1929 became a symbol in people's minds. I mean, if you said 1929, it was like saying 1776 or 1492. I mean, everybody knew exactly what you were talking about. In 1929, my dad, who was 26 years of age then, was employed as a security salesman by a, a local small bank. And uh, he sold stocks and bonds, but he mostly sold stocks. And when stocks fall 48%, and you were selling them to people a few months ago, you really don't feel like going out and facing those same people. So I think my dad probably, I like to do as they say now, shelter in place, which means stay at home. And uh, there really wasn't that much in our house. Uh, we just had a small yard. It was wintertime anyway. My dad wouldn't have been puttering around the yard anyway. And it really wasn't, you know, television wasn't there. And, and he and my mother got along very well. So under those conditions, I was uh, born about nine months later. So I didn't notice at the time that the market was closed. But the stock market had actually recovered over 20% during that nine and a half month period or thereabouts. People did not think in the fall of 1930, they did not think they were in the Great, uh, a great Depression. They thought it was a recession very much like had occurred at least a dozen times, although not always when stock markets were important. But they, they, we'd had many recessions in the, in the United States over the time, and this did not look like it was something dramatically out of the or ordinary. And for a while, actually for about 10 days after my birth, the stock market actually managed to go up all up one or 2% there but, uh, in those 10 days. But that's the last day. Uh, well, from that point, the uh, stock market went from level of 240 to, to 41, which was a noticeable decline because uh, if somebody had given me $1,000 on the day I was born and I bought stock with it. My thousand dollars would have become uh, one hundred and seventy dollars in less than two years. And that is something that none of us here have ever experienced that uh, we may have had it with one stock occasionally, but but in terms of uh, having a broad range of America marked down eighty three percent in two years and marked down 89% of the peak. It was in September 3rd, 1929. Uh, it was extraordinary. And in that intervening period, less than one year after I was born, just slightly less than one year, my dad went to the bank where he worked and had his account. And of course, the bank had a sign on it closed. And uh, so he had no job. He had two kids at that point. And his father had a grocery store, but it, Charlie and I both worked for my grandfather. Charlie worked there in 1940, I worked there in 1941, so we didn't know each other. But, but my grandfather said to my father that, uh, don't worry about your groceries. Howard, he says, I'll just let your bill run. Oh, that was, my grandfather was not exactly. Uh, he, he was, he cared about his family, but he wasn't gonna go crazy. And uh, one of the things as I look back on that period, and I don't think the economists generally like to give it that much of a, point of importance, but if we'd had the FDIC 10 years earlier, we the FDIC started on January 1st, 1934. It was part of the sweeping legislation that took place when Roosevelt came in. But if we'd had the FDIC, we would have had a much, much different experience, I believe, in the, in the Great Depression. People blame it on smooth smooth hall here and they, I mean they, they uh, there's all kinds of things and, and the margin requirements in 29 and all of those things entered into creating a recession but if you have over 4,000 banks fail that's 4,000 local experiences where people save and save and save and put their money away and then someday they reach for it and it's gone and that happens you know, in all 48 states, and it happens to your neighbors, and it happens to your relatives. 
it has to have an effect on the psyche that's incredible. So one very, very, very good thing that came out of the depression, in my view, is the FDIC. And uh, it would have been a somewhat different world, I'm sure, if the bank failures hadn't just rolled across this country with people that thought that they were savers found out that they had nothing when they went there and there was a sign that said closed. Uh, so the Great Depression went on and it lasted a very long time, but it, it lasted a lot longer in the minds of people than it did actually in its effects. World War II came along and on sort of an involuntary manner, we adopted Keynesianism. We started running fiscal deficits, of course, that were absolutely huge and took our debt up to a percentage of GDP, which we've never reached, had never reached before and never reached since. So we had an enormous economic recovery, but the minds of people had been so scarred, the memories. Parents told their children, 1929 became a symbol in people's minds. I mean, if you said 1929, it was like saying 1776 or 1492. I mean, everybody knew exactly what you were talking about. And it affected stock prices in a rather remarkable way. It was January 4th of 1951 that the kid who was born on August 30th in 1930 had finished college before the stock market got back to where it was uh, at that earlier time. So take the years from 1920, 1930, or 1929, really, to 1951, or take the year from my birth, 20 years, and bear in mind that, you know, the country was only 140 years old when this started. That, that's 20 years out of a, this amazing 231 year lifetime of our country that uh, was flat out, you know, a time of no economic growth and no feeling by people in terms about the wealth of the country, the, about what the American economy was worth, what all these corporations that were doing far, far, far better than they were long ago, but it took all of that time to restore in the market a price level. It was equal to what it was when I was born 20 years earlier. So if you think about the fact that we're enduring a few months and we'll endure some many more months and we don't know how it comes out and people in the 30s didn't know how it was going to come out, but they endured, persevered, prospered and the American miracle continued. But it's interesting in that I remembered that at the start of 1954, the stock market was, the Dow was only at about 280. And I remember 1954 because it was the best year I ever had in the stock market. Uh, the Dow went from essentially uh, to 280 or thereabouts at the start of the year to a little over 400 at the end of the year. and. When it went to 400, as soon as it went across 381, that famous figure from 1929, when it went to 400, and this will be hard for some of you to believe, but everybody wondered, is this 1929 all over again? And that seems a little far-fetched because it was a different country in 1954, but that was the common question. And it actually achieved such uh, a level of worry about whether we were about to jump off another cliff just because the 381 of 1929 had been succeeded, <clears throat> exceeded, that Senator Fulbright, Bill Fulbright of Arkansas, who became very famous later in terms of the Foreign Relations Committee, but he headed the Senate Banking Committee and he called a special, for a special investigation. He really was questioning whether we had built another house of cards again. And his committee in March of 1955, with the Dow at 405, assembled 20 of the best minds in the United States to testify as to whether we were going crazy again because the market was at 400, the Dow was at 400, 
and we'd gotten in this incredible trouble before, but that was the mindset of the country. It's incredible. We didn't really believe America was what it was. And my boss, the reason I'm familiar with this, was that I was working in New York for one of the 20 people that was called down to testify. And I remember, because Ben Graham was one of the three smartest people I've met in my life, and when he testified, the Dow at 404, he had one line in there right toward the start in, in his written testimony, and he said, the stock market is high, it looks high, it is high, but it's not as high as it looks. But he said, it is high. And since that time, we felt the American tailwind at full force and a market today that has produced $100 for every dollar. All you did had was had to believe in America, just buy a cross-section of America. You didn't, you didn't have to read the Wall Street Journal. You didn't have to look up the price of your stock. You didn't have to pay a lot of money and fees to anybody. You just had to believe that the American miracle was intact. But you'd had this testing period between 1929 and Certainly 1954 is indicated by what happened when it got back up to 380. You had this testing period and uh, people really, they'd lost faith to some degree. They just didn't see the potential of what America could do. And we found that uh, nothing can stop America when you get right down to it. And uh, it's been true all along. It may have been interrupted with the scariest of scenarios when you had a war with one group of states fighting another group of states. And it may have been tested again in the Great Depression, and it may be tested now to some degree. But in the end, the answer is never bet against America. And that, in my view, is as true today as it was in 1789, and even was true at the during the Civil War and the depths of the Depression.